G'day ladies and gentle tubers. In the next couple of days, we're getting some baby chickens and we need somewhere to put them. We're gonna try and shove them underneath a hen, but if all of that else fails, we've got to have some backup cat-proof baby chicken uh, housing in our house. So, I've gotten a big seeding tray. This is about, I don't know, two feet by three and a half feet, maybe four feet. And I've got some heavy duty hardware mesh. Uh, this is uh, steel with a PVC coating. Use this to build the chicken coop. Um, the chicken coop's pretty much bear proof thanks to this. So, I'm gonna knock up a couple of walls and a roof and hopefully make it strong enough to save baby chickens from our miniature panther that wants to tear them to pieces. Here she is, the littlest black cat on the planet. But in her mind's eye, she's a rodent avian assassin that has folklore written about her from the dawn of time with piercing green eyes and talons that can rip through a man. No baby chicken stands a chance. First thing to do is to get your hardware mesh flattened out. You use the edge of a table like I'm doing here and roll it backwards and forwards until you get it nice and flat. And grab yourself a set of tin snips. I find tin snips are the best for this job. Measure and cut all four sides to size, leaving an extra two inches of overall height. Try to cut the wire as clean as possible to minimise sharp edges on you and your chickens. So I've cut all the sides to size. Now I'm just going to put a little one inch fold at 90 degrees at the top and the bottom of each side to hold the, the structure rigid. I'm using a piece of 2x4 that I've cut into the shape of a mallet. You typically use something like this for sheet metal, but it works beautifully on hard wire. Once you've done the top and bottom of all four sides, it's time to assemble. Now I like to use hog rings in this scenario. They knit the sides together perfectly and will make it easy to fold this enclosure up when the baby chicken season is over. These are particularly good hog ring staples and stapler made by DeWalt. Alternatively, you could just use a lot of zip ties and save yourself the money of buying a tool. And there she is, sides assembled, and a pretty decent sized enclosure at that. Right, so for the, okay, for the lid, we're gonna do the same or similar construction to the sides where we put a little 90 degree bend on each end. What that does is it keeps everything rigid. So for the lid, we've got obviously four sides that are gonna need support. So we're gonna do a one inch bend on each side, but to allow that, we need to cut a little one inch notch out of each corner. Otherwise, we'll end up with a fold here and that's not really desirable for wire. One inch in, which is, this is one inch by half inch wire. So I need to come in two on the half inch side and clip and one on the inch side and clip and clip down. And I cut that little square out, which hopefully you can see there and it's focusing on it. I'll bring it back towards me. And we do that on each corner before doing our bends and that'll keep everything nice and rigid. So the lid was made slightly oversized so even after the fold, on the edges, there's an inch of overlap around every side. 
Now I simply fix it in place with a whole bunch of zip ties. This will allow me to remove the lid for storage later. You'll see that I have zip tied it at the very outer lip to make sure it opens nicely. Finally, due to the depth of this enclosure, I need to cut an access door in the front so I can feed them baby chickens. I simply cut out a suitable size, give all the edges of the openings a one inch fold, both for strength and to avoid being scratched, and then make the door slightly larger than the opening and zip tie it in place. Eventually it will be held closed by a couple of bungee cords. I don't think there's any need here for some fancy latch and lock. So meanwhile I was building this thing and the missus and I decided that we'd try sticking the babies under the big chicken. Here she is, all mean and nasty. She's got a big clutch of eggs underneath her that we've been trying to get her to hatch out. So I'm going to move her and the eggs into the enclosure. The plan is she'll look after the eggs until the babies arrive in the post and then we'll move the eggs into an incubator inside and then hopefully have another broody hand to chuck more chickens under after this one's finished. If the proverbial hits the fan we can boot this hen out of this enclosure and raise all of the babies inside in that enclosure. So I'm going to leave you a couple of pictures at the end of a smaller enclosure I've made just in case we need to keep baby chickens in another enclosure overnight. Hopefully she'll settle down in a minute after I leave and sit back on the eggs. There will be another couple of videos on this little adventure so please stay tuned and we'll see you next time. Thanks guys.